Mr. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, Carlton graduates. It is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce our honorary degree recipient, William H. Barton. William Barton is one of Canada's truly great public servants. It is no exaggeration to say that he is a legend for our time in the annals of Canadian foreign policy and international diplomacy. William H. Barton served with great distinction as a Canadian diplomat and public servant for more than 40 years. After receiving his Bachelor of Arts degree at the University of British Columbia in 1940, Mr. Barton served as an officer in the Canadian Army until 1946. His war experience led to a position at the Defence Research Board. He rose quickly through the ranks and became the board's secretary in 1950. He was subsequently seconded to the Department of External Affairs in 1952 and served in major diplomatic posts in Vienna, Geneva, and New York. In those years, he worked on a range of assignments from defense liaison with the United States to the peaceful uses of atomic energy and the creation of the International Atomic Energy Agency in 1956. During the course of his exceptional career, William Barton became Canada's internationally recognized authority on peace and security issues. As Canada's ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva from 1972 to 1976, he made an important contribution to the strategic arms limitation talks and the strengthening of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty regime. He was asked to chair what became known as the Barton Group, which became a major clearinghouse for views on all arms control and disarmament matters among Western countries. In the fall of 1976, William Barton became ambassador and permanent representative of Canada to the United Nations in New York. In 1977 until 1978, he represented Canada on the UN Security Council and took his turn as president of the Security Council. After retiring in 1980, William Barton continued his involvement in international affairs and Canadian foreign policy. His considerable experience was an invaluable asset in the formation of the Canadian Institute for International Peace and Security. He was the Institute's first chairman from 1984 to 1989. In 1994, William Barton received the Order of Canada and was cited as a highly respected and trusted diplomat who enhanced Canada's role and stature in the international community. Earlier this year, Mr. Barton made a remarkable donation to Carleton that extends his influence and extraordinary career in international affairs. The donation finances the William and Jeannie Barton Chair in International Affairs in the Norman Patterson School of International Affairs. The gift is the third largest individual donation in the university's history. It will keep the study of arms control and disarmament at the forefront of this university's teaching and research agenda. Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of the outstanding contribution to Canada's role in world affairs and the advancement of global disarmament, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, upon William H. Barton. By virtue of my authority, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. Congratulations.
Chancellor Garneau, President Mahmoud, distinguished members of the university and guests, and above all, fellow graduates of the class of 08. <laughs> 68 years ago, almost to the day, my own graduating class at the University of British Columbia, the class of 1940, assembled for its moment in the sun. There were 300 of us. It was the largest graduating class up to the, that time in UBC's history. UBC now has 40,000 students. The summer of 1940 was a time of dread and uncertainty. World War II was a gathering storm. The so-called phony war that started the war from the time between Hitler's invasion of Poland and the invasion of France was coming to an abrupt end. Graduation day at UBC was the very day that Germany marched into Holland and, Denmark and Belgium. Many of us would be joining up in days or weeks. Norway and Denmark had been invaded two or three weeks before. I had to mention this because the honorary graduate was an eminent retiring professor of agriculture, originally from Denmark. To us, he seemed very old. It's funny how time changes one's perception. Denmark had just fallen, but that didn't stop him. The subject of his address, believe it or not, was higher education in Denmark. And he proceeded to tell us about it at very great length and extraordinary detail. I resolved then that if ever I should be in such a position, the absolute minimum maximum of time I would allow myself was 10 minutes. I believe that every other graduate that year came to the same conclusion. <laughs> and I'm pleased to see that present day graduating degree granters have come to the same conclusion. This being the case, my message must be short. I believe it's expected of me that I should have words of wisdom for the new graduates. I haven't the temerity to do that, but if your interests lie in the direction mine did, and if you are successful in passing the exams, I can only recommend that you consider a career with the public service. You won't get rich. You'll find it very hard going sometimes, frustrating, and at times discouraging. But in the final analysis, and above all, I can tell you it will be extraordinarily rewarding. There are a few higher or better cal callings. I never wanted to do anything else myself. My own service was with the Department of External Affairs. There I soon found myself working with a range of international organizations, the Atomic Energy Agency, NATO, the UN, specialized agencies in the UN itself. I was fortunate enough to be the man on the spot as we served the fourth two-year term on the Security Council in 1977 and 78. Today we're debating whether Canada should again take a run for the seat on the Security Council. I have a feeling that it will be a much harder campaign this time. Some people find the record of the UN and and in particular the Security Council, to be disheartening and disillusioning. Useless is the adjective applied at the Security Council by one Canadian politician whose name I won't mention. I don't agree. The UN is supposed to be a center for harmonizing the action of nations. By its very nature, it can't, it can't ride roughshod over the views of the substantial minorities. We expect the UN to provide quick, 
and acceptable answers to long-standing problems which by their very nature defy solution. And that it can't do. But history has shown that when impatient governments turn to other mechanisms, all too often they confound their problems. And that is when the United Nations proves its value as the ultimate forum to find solutions to seemingly intractable issues. Our present problems in the Middle East are a prime example of what I mean. So when people are disillusioned with the UN and impatient for action, I like to quote the words of a great Canadian diplomat, Hume Rong. Disillusionment, in the literal sense of absence of illusion, is a good thing. It should mean that we see more clearly, not that we have lost hope. In my experience, this is the essence of diplomacy, especially at the UN. And it is a spirit that must motivate all who work there. With these words, my message ends. Ten minutes on the spot. Let me conclude by offering my warmest words of congratulation to those who are about to graduate from this great university. And let me also congratulate your parents and all the others who supported your academic endeavors. It remains only to thank Carlton for having me here today and to wish you every success in your future careers, wherever they may lie. Good luck.